Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more A World Betrayed DLC for Total War Three Kingdoms. Let's play as Sun Tzu. So, I've been looking forward to playing as Sun Tzu. Um, those of you who follow the channel know that I have a thing for Tata, so um, I wanted to get him out of the way first. Uh, but also with Sun Tzu, I wanted to spend some time just to get over his new faction mechanics before I did a let's play, just to be a little bit more comfortable with it because it is a big change from many of the other factions in the game. So his starting situation is hard and they have brought him in as a vassal of Yuan Shu, which is historically accurate. Uh, Sun Jian was not an independent warlord uh, in his own right either. He was a general under Yuan Shu. So um, him starting under Yuan Shu is it satisfies my need for a level of historical accuracy quite nicely. Uh, he's still a vanguard, he's still one of the better vanguards in the game. Um, he has a 100% charge bonus for cavalry, which unfortunately doesn't really suit him as a southerner, because of course the southern cavalry was famously crap um, for the time period, and the northern cavalry famously outstanding. Um, however, you know, the mercenary cavalry and things uh, that you know from um, all other variants of the game are still pretty good and he will at least improve any weak cavalry you bring in and still a, a higher tier cavalry, of course, will be fantastic with him. Um, his faction specialization is a big change from Sun Jian. He has reckless luck. So when you see when he starts the game, he has this bar of luck and um, when it's filled he gets all of these incredible bonuses to speed and um, just his ability to collect generals and all of these wonderful things but it slowly ticks down you can stop it from ticking down by completing some of his ambitions um, which also grant extra bonuses um, but when it does tick down to zero he dies uh, Sun Tzu for those of you that know the history did a lot in a very short space of time. After his father died, he was a teenager um, and he spent a couple of years away uh, basically doing the standard Confucian show of filial piety, which was to serve by his father's tomb, keep it clean, uh, spend time with the family, uh, sort of uh, religious meditation based experience essentially. And um, he came back. Uh, after those two years, went back to join Yuan Shu. Uh, Yuan Shu, it should be said, um, by this stage already had the Imperial Seal. He had taken the Imperial Seal from Sun Jian um, by basically kidnapping Sun Jian's wife um, and saying, give me the seal. Sun Jian being a good little general aunt, turned to his boss and said, yes, here you are, boss. Here's the Imperial Seal. So Yuan Shu already had it by this stage. Um, but for the sake of this game, where it follows romance of the Three Kingdoms more closely than it does the history, uh, Sun Tzu has the seal and he trades the seal for men to go and help um, his uh, uncle uh, fight against Liu Yao. Um, in history, however, uh, Sun Tzu used some of his influence and his reputation to bargain with Yuan Shu. Yuan Shu gave him a pretty pitiful amount of men, but uh, he already had his um, father's old generals, who you see two of them here, but there's also Han Dang as well, but Huang Gai and Chong Pu, who were pretty famous uh, at the time. Um, he collected his own men from around the region and obviously the Sun clan and the Wu clan, the Wu clan being his mother's clan, were pretty big in the area. So they collected a lot of support. So actually he left with a good few thousand more men than the 1000 odd that Yuan Shu lent him to start the invasion of the South and eventually become a sort of independent faction that as we know, he would die uh, from an arrow uh, in a hunting accident, which was poisoned and he would die eventually. And then Sun Quan, his younger brother, would take over and become king of uh, Wu. Anyway, that's enough about the little bit of the history. Uh, unique features have changed a little bit as well. He has obviously the mercenaries that we know and love from before. Um, but he also has the Handmaid Guard, which are sort of based on the romance idea that Sun Ren or Sun Shang Shang, um, however she is named based on different games and different historical and fictional sources, 
um, she had a group of fully trained female protectors. So this, this is based on this idea, and these are actually pretty good as they give good bonuses for characters as well, uh, defensive bonuses for characters, as well as being a pretty solid um, unit. And then there's the Tiger Guard, which are a really, really good uh, assault spear-ish unit. So, um, yeah, we're going to be looking forward to seeing those on the field. Noteworthy characters. In this DLC, Wu got a huge spike of characters, which was great to see because in the original game, it was very much... I mean, even Cao Cao didn't really have his characters. It was just fawn over Liu Bei, fawn over Liu Bei. Um, but uh, actually, he gets the people who should be... Well, most of the people who should be famous. So, of course, Zhou Yu, who... Um, for those of you who read Three Kingdoms, you know, he has this rivalry with Zhuge Liang and all the rest. Actually, he was a brilliant general in his own right, childhood friend of Sun Tzu, um, extremely talented individual. Um, there are other strategists as well, um, noteworthy to Wu, who also have been given uh, unique portraits and a little bit of a boost in status as well. But Zhou Yu is the prime one. He, he is a fantastic general um, and advisor. Here we have Huang Gai, um, who has had a unique portrait since the last DLC, Mandate of Heaven, um, famous mostly for his famed betrayal at the Battle of Red Cliffs that led to the fire ships destroying Tatao's navy and causing the rout. Um, he has been battling with Sun Jian since uh, very early on and was part of Sun Jian's campaigns against Dong Zhuo in the Coalition era, where uh, Sun Jian was actually... Uh, the army that beat Hua Xiong, uh, killed Hua Xiong, not Guan Yu, because Guan Yu and Liu Bei were not even fighting in that conflict, and they were still dealing with yellow turbans. Um, they had fought against Liu Bu and beaten him. Um, you know, these were, were pretty talented guys. Uh, Chong Pu was another one who was there as well. Um, again, very, very loyal to Sun Jian. Uh, Han Dong, who isn't mentioned and doesn't unfortunately have a unique portrait, is the third of that group who joined Sun Tzu uh, from Yuan Shu as loyal members of his, fa his father's old retinue. And then, of course, Sun Quan, who eventually will become the heir and take over. Anyway, enough of all of this. Let's get into the game. Yesaushi,海儿总是活在父辈的阴影之下。然而又此,终有长大成人的一天。借时无辈,必须独当一面。做出抉择。自从破虏将军谢氏以来但此人欲壑难填
建立属于自己的势力。江东与中原有天险相隔，勿辅民风，主公定当图之。江东乃是刘繇的领地，但他新官上任，未经战事，要夺取江东之地，从他入手，或许是个不错的选择。正是如此。然主公若欲占据江东，则必与另一劲敌交手。贼徒颜白虎也盘踞在江东一带。主公若要夺取其地，此人绝不会坐以待毙。另一劲敌，无妨。我亦将擒而制之。孙家大业，现下由我肩负。不论是用言辞还是刀兵，我都庇护孙家兴旺盛强。不负父亲英明。Okay, so here we have the new faction breakdown for Sun Tzu. Uh, he has his reckless luck, which is a pooled resource. Um, while it's high, he's fast and unbeatable force. A slightly exaggerated, but it does make him very, very good. But if it reaches zero, he'll die. Uh, to regain it, you have to complete the legacy of Wu ambitions, which I'll go through um as we get an opportunity to show them. Shared expertise. So this can just boost the experience of a character, which is really quite nice. Um, each character instance's faction grants him shared experience points. Once they reach rank three, five, and eight, and ten, they also uh, get points uh, respectively. Um, and this can boost lots of things in the uh, court positions as well. Legacy of Wu ambitions are achieved by capturing regions, battles, ranking up, deeds, all of that stuff. Um, and they'll grant you permanent bonuses, which are fantastic. Some of them are really fantastic. Uh, ministerial positions. Um, and these ones, normally if you throw someone into a court position, then you just get a flat set of bonuses. In this one, based on their rank, you will get uh, improved bonuses. So rank one, you don't get that much from it, but rank three, you'll start to see benefits. Rank five, you'll see massive benefits, and so on and so on. Um, and these obviously will have different effects than the standard Han Chinese. And faction ranks uh, grant no bonuses to Sun Tzu's faction. So, for example, if he becomes a Marquis or a Duke, you don't really get the same bonuses you would as if you were Cao Cao, for example. Right. Uh, a quest for revenge. Lord Sun Tzu, you have served Yuan Shu as a loyal vassal since your father's death at the hand of Huang Zhu four years ago. He has been a capricious and demanding master, but you have served with honour and distinction. But you will not forget your duty as a son. Huang Zhu must pay for killing your father. To make him do so, you will need land, warriors, and resources. Your family's homeland of Jiangdong would offer you all these things. Perhaps Yuan Shu can be persuaded to let you take your father's former general south and build a base of your own. Until then, you must continue to obey his commands. So Sun Tzu is a man of great abilities, but he is reckless and his luck will not last forever. If Sun Tzu's luck runs out, he will die. Achieving Sun Tzu's ambitions grant powerful bonuses while also delaying his luck from running out. The faster it is stopped, the more his luck will stay with him forever. And focusing on recruit, uh, recruiting powerful characters to your court. Yuan Shu orders the conquest of Shu province. So long as you still swear fealty to Yuan Shu, his orders must be obeyed. As such, you must now march against Lu Kang at his command, then continue on to Shu province. Yet although you go in Yuan Shu's name, do not forget to keep an eye on beyond that to the potential personal gain. So you need to capture and occupy a settlement belonging to Lu Kang. Now, Lu Kang was a member of the Lu clan who were pretty big in the area. Um, and for those of you who know the history or even romance, you'll know that a number of these Lu clan members end up working for uh, the Sun family, eventually, uh, most famous of which is probably Lu Xun, um, who was part of, though not the mastermind of, the um, uh, setup for Guan Yu that led to Guan Yu's death and defense against Lu Bei's counterattack. Um, but he defended the uh, borders of Wu throughout his life he was outstanding at keeping enemy at bay whilst the internal politics were ripping the heart of Wu from the inside anyway reward on success we get your father's generals so that will be Handong, uh, Huang Gai and uh, Chong Pu uh, Yuan Shu supplies which is reduction in mustering turns and reduction in recruitment cost and growing might which is 50% bonus experience and 10% replenishment which is really rather nice now, I just want to make a quick mention about Yan Baihu because they do set you up. So we are obviously, um, Sun Jian was the tiger of Jiangdong. He is the white tiger. Um, so there's, even though it's connected to his father with the tiger, tiger and all the rest, we are somewhat 
uh, related in a sense that Destiny is forcing us to have a fight. Um, in uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, uh, Ling Tao beats Yuan Baihu, his head is removed and it's brought back to Sun Tzu and everyone parties. Uh, in reality, Ling Tao did probably beat Yan Bai Hu. A um, little bit of strategy because Yan Bai Hu uh, allied with Wang Lang. Um, Sun Tzu managed to outmaneuver Wang Lang and defeat him. Um, it's actually in one of the historical battles. If you play the historical battles, one of the, the battles that ends up with Wang Lang being defeated. Um, and this leads to Yan Bai Hu losing his supply network and having tied off in the hills. Yan Bai Hu probably survived his battle with Ling Tao and he probably outlived Sun Tzu, but he was no longer the threat he once was. Um, they've made him quite a major player because he had a big reputation and because he's one of the people who held out against uh, Sun Tzu and gave him a little bit of a difficulty, but to be honest, he isn't that major a player. Yuan Shu is our so-called Lord. Um, he's not wholly to be trusted as a Lord. He, has, he did really have a lust for ambition. He was a bit short-sighted, really. I think it's the best thing. Now, Book of Rights, that's not bad. Marshal G and a Clay Pig. Um, we should also start off with some other things. As you see, there's just the two of us right now. Um, we have an Heirloom Spear, we have shiny uh, personalized armor, no followers, and we have the Imperial Jade Seal. So I'm just gonna throw this in for now, whilst we have it. Um, after that, we're gonna switch out to this. Uh, Clay Pig, we can give to our lady here just to uh, keep her happy um, she hasn't changed at all uh, maybe one day possibly if they do a later date DLC uh, with Sun Chuan as the faction leader maybe she will get a little bit of love from CA because she would then be the sort of matriarch figure uh, but as of yet she hasn't been given the same love as perhaps Lady BM um, but she is still a solid uh, commander should you need to call on her We'll have a quick look at the family tree um, as well, just so you know. Obviously, Sun Tzu is dead. Uh, Sun Zhong, grandfather, long dead. Uh, melon farmer. Um, Sun Tzu here. Sun Chuan is 12 years old. Um, he is the heir. And then we have Sun Ren, who we uh, also know a lot about uh, as a pretty impressive vanguard herself coming uh, of age in a long time. Now, here we have all of the special... Um, faction ranks that we can get here there's lots of them uh we have this active now i'm just going to show you something if we put her in there is no real position effects it says here the effects of some sort of ministers depend on their rank at rank three the base effects of their min ministerial positions are applied so we need to have someone who is rank three to make that worthwhile so there's no point placing lady Wu or anyone else who is rank one in any of these positions okay right Quest for Revenge, mission issued, we know that. Um, Lu Kang is here. Uh, he has Lu Jiang. Um, so, we'll get to it in just one second, actually. Just checking out this army. A um, lot of Lance Cavalry, a lot of Raider Cavalry, tiny group of archers, tiny group of mercenary infantry. Just the type of people you want to besiege a city. So, let's go do it. Sun Tzu doesn't get anything unless he is reckless. So let's be a little bit reckless. All right, so like I said, this isn't really the most effective force for besieging. We certainly do not want to go up this alleyway here because all of those towers are going to slaughter us. Um, he has some G militia or G infantry as well, I'm pretty certain. <clears throat> so we want to attack from one of these sides here, spread him out as much as we can so that we can punch through just a little bit. Not gonna need any of that stuff. Uh, no formations, because Sun Tzu isn't that type of chap. Uh, we're gonna have axes one side with Sun Tzu. Uh, Raider Cav like to burn and pillage. Lance Cav are a little bit more expensive. Right. Uh, no loose formation at all. So what do we have? Okay, G infantry captain. Um, actually, no, you can slow down because look how quick he is in comparison to the infantry. Uh, doesn't want a duel, which, you know, he probably couldn't beat Sun Tzu, um, but 
he's not that bad, you know, as a champion. And since there's only a vanguard. I should note as well that these uh, shock cavalry uh, in this patch are considerably weaker to um, any sort of archer fire. Considerably weaker to any sort of archer fire. Right. They're going to get a little bit wobbly. We might be able to send some sir in there. And do his uh, Flames of the Phoenix. Just to encourage them to perhaps run away a little bit faster. Open this gateway up. There we go. There's a good man. Right, kill him, kill him, kill him. How are you chaps doing? Good? Right, charge. Right. My archers now need to advance. Um, Raider Cav. You're going to take a beating doing this, but I don't really see much else we can do. Hold there. Take this ground quickly. Uh... Raider Cav, I'm going to sacrifice you because you're l cheaper, basically, and I'll probably change some of you out. You got that ground? Good. Right, run over here. Go, 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 go. Come on, Axes, I just need you to hold. Oh, you're dying in a horrible way. <laughs> Come on, this way. One of you this way. And one of you this way. Lance Cav in there as well, please. Yeah, just take that ground. Come on, boys. I need you on him. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We done yet? Come on. Done. Right, chase them to death. So they don't come back. These boys here. Mm. Could be better, could be better. Right, I need one of you just to ride straight up there. Another one go for the center. Come on, Sensor. Ah, bollocks. No, you're being slaughtered. Like I said, the archers have a distinct advantage now. Right, up you come. How are you doing destroying that? Um... Slowly, I think it can be best described as. Okay, well, here's what it is. Come on, Sensor. There we go, he's running now. Bang. Right. Archers. Can we get some shots off here? Cavalry. Right up here, please. You are Lance Cav as well, so you should do a slightly better job. Uh, yeah, you chaps can chase him, which would be fine for me. You Lance Cav, pull back, because you're just getting shot to crap over there. You can flip off over there. Come on. Enemy General falls, fantastic. Which means I can have you boys back. Come on, over here, over here, over here. Ride, 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 ride. Victory. Oh, thankfully. Lost a lot of men there. Period victory, as expected. Okay, 
Got a lot of money occupied, and uh, here we go. Capture and occupied one of the settlements from Lu Kang. Faction destroyed, Lu Kang. Thank you. Wu Jing, who is uh, our mother's brother, younger brother, I believe, um, basically our uncle. Wu Jing, your kin, has requested assistance in combating Liu Yao and his growing forces. Yuan Shu has provided you with the funds to raise and maintain an army for several seasons. However, as you must as scouts deliver, uh, as you must as scouts deliver reports that there is another southern general in the area, one building his own army. This general, it is said, claims to be an old friend of your family. So we need to move any character towards the following county. Yang Zhou, um, old friend returns with the army, we get treasury and we get Yuan Shu's supplies. Um, now, part of the reason why Yuan Shu allowed Sun Tzu and these generals, plus a thousand odd men, to go to fight uh, Liu Yao is because Yuan Shu did not... So, so Yang Zhou... Um, Yangzhou is a, is a province. Zhou means province in Chinese. And so this is actually made up of lots of different counties. Um, but because of the way the game works and the map and everything else, it's it's difficult for them to show that um, in accuracy without having millions of cities and provinces and all the rest. So uh, Yuan Shu sort of kicked out Liu Yao from this area, formed it as his own heartland. Um, he didn't take the whole of Yangzhou, but a good chunk of Yangzhou. Um, and Liu Yao and Yuan Shu were not really best buddies from that point onwards. Yuan Shu also had the Imperial Seal at this stage and was waving it around and saying, I need food. Um, and he put pressure on Liu Yao and uh, Liu Chong and Liu Kang and pretty much everyone to provide him with food and supplies and all the rest. And he was upsetting all of his neighbors. So obviously this led to the assassination of Liu Chong um, because he refused food. Liu Kang refused to give him food, which is why Sun Tzu was sent to beat him up. So basically, it, it allowed um, Yuan Shu to use Sun Tzu to deal with someone who was a potential threat whilst he could focus his efforts on Liu Chong. Um, yeah, basically. Right, mission success, occupation, factory destroyed, mission issued. Liu Jiang has been taken. Um, we can get communal workshops, which... Uh, that's a good chunk of my income right now. I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, so this army here is not how I would like it to be, but I will hold it for now. We have now got Huang Gai Chongpu and Han Dong. Um, Unfortunately, we don't really have a huge amount of stuff to give them. Handang has a poor weapon. Chongpu has a poor weapon, but we can upgrade that at least a little. Uh, Huangai has a poor weapon as well. Oh, that's thoroughly disappointing. Um, but these three are pretty impressive. Really quite impressive. Uh, they cause a little bit of an effect to our income, but we don't need to worry about that too much. We have here Chancellor and Grand Commandant, and we could add these chaps to it. So, because they're rank three, they give bonuses. So, uh, plus one available assignments, minus 10 character salary, quite useful. And as you'll see as well, it's the same whoever we put in there. So we can whack in whoever we want into this post um, and keep them relatively happy. Grand Commandant, will give you plus two available armies, uh, minus five recruitment cost, um, which again is quite nice. I think for Grand Command, I think I will possibly chuck in Huang Gai. Uh, here I'm gonna chuck in um, Han Dang. Am I gonna chuck in Han Dang or Chang Pu? No, Chang Pu. Um, I'm thinking because Chang Pu is probably gonna be a better administrator than Han Dang. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll work it out, we'll work it out. And then we have an assignment now as well, which works quite nicely for us. Our money is coming from commerce and industry. It's not really coming from peasantry. Um, this chap needs something to do. So do we do mustering or do we do uh, replenishment? I would probably do 
mustering for the meantime not that worried about population growth and that will keep him relatively happy faction council we can invoke the council now we have overpopulation which means we need to build an upgrade to our city and war on all fronts wars flare like a fire thriving on abundance of air battle is costly and conflict unending more warriors will be needed if we have to stem these hostilities so raise a force okay well we can deal with that eventually anyway um yeah, so just to uh, double check, we have Wujin calls for help. We need to move to Yangzhou Toolmaker. So where is Yangzhou Toolmaker? Just here. Well, we can head there pretty much next turn. Now we have some land. We should look at doing a trade deal. Um, what you want to do with trade deals always is look to see who's going to give you the best possible deal. He is, for now, he's our uh, overlord as well. So we may as well go for I'm it. We can negotiate this deal. Um, we can even receive a marriage and all of that stuff, which there's potential to do so, but I kind of want to hold out to see if we can uh, get the two chows in. Um, we can request payment and we can request regular payments. Uh, sorry, request regular payments as well. Though um, I have found in this game that uh, early on, most of the factions don't particularly like it, but he has a chunk of money because of course he has vassals. So that's going to work quite nice for him. As far as non-aggression packs go and military access, you don't really have much in the way of options here. Uh, Louis Al doesn't want peace, so don't worry too much about him. We're not going to build that right now. We're going to instead show off this. So this is the legacy of Wu. This is what you do to keep your luck high, this being your luck here. Uh, reckless luck, we are right now, we are lucky, so we have 40% campaign movement range which is vast i mean that's so quick uh, reduction to retinue upkeep uh, increased supplies but we lose 10 luck per turn and it'll drop down and drop down and drop down as time goes on so how do we uh, keep it high well we have to fulfill some of these legacies of wool so for example secure the mountains if we secure shindu we get plus two reckless luck per turn so that helps keep it higher we're still Negative 10, but you know, that will help. Secure the middle of the Yangtze, Poyang. Okay, secure the resources, Jianye, Kuai Ji. For food, the little conqueror, Young Hegemon. Uh, so the Young Hegemon was actually his uh, nickname, the little conqueror, sort of a, how it's been adapted over time for English. But in Chinese, Hegemon would be better because that is related to a previous. Uh, man who was the hegemon of china his name escapes me right now but if you want to know more about that i can recommend a uh, serious trivia's uh, video preview on sun Tzu. he goes into the history in detail and he's one of the few youtubers who know it considerably more than i do um so yeah i do recommend his channel if you haven't already heard of serious trivia check him out he knows his stuff um but young hegemon uh unbeatable and master sun so what you need to do is capture five settlements with Sun Tzu as the commander. Uh, that means him actually as the commander of the army, not just in the army. Win five duels and deploy five commanders. This should be relatively simple, okay? The old guard. So have a rank four vanguard who is over 40 and have a rank four sentinel who is over 40. If we were to have a check of these chaps here, he's 40. He's 40. This shouldn't be too hard. Handang couple of years off that should not be hard it gives us plus one reckless and uh, melee uh, damage which is quite nice next generation so uh, rank 4 sensor who is 18 to 30 strategist 18 to 30 young leader 18 to 30 so with this um, I don't know if this applies to uh, sensor himself I, yeah it's not sensor it states there so whatever happens you're gonna need to hire new people for this but they will come along. Um, Strash this, you've got Zhou Yu coming along. You have Sun Chuan coming along. There is a number of Wu generals who you can place into this position. So again, isn't that difficult? And it enables formation turtle for your armies. So you don't necessarily need the strategists to do it. Governors and scholars. Um, again, two rank five higher strategists, two rank five higher commanders. Commanders, uh, there aren't a huge number of them for Wu as unique in the early game, so you need to work on that. Strategists should not be hard because you have um, a massive number of strategists who were loyal to Sun uh, Tzu at the beginning and then later on to um, Sun Chuan. 
so yeah I mean Joe Yu is definitely coming along as well um, but there are others there's uh, Zhang uh, same Zhang Zhao coming along as well so yeah that should be very easy to do Lady Sun's Guard uh, f female uh, commanders and sentinels range damage not bad bandits and murderers beat Huang Zhu beat Yan Bai Hu uh, take Chang Sha. Zhou Yu's ambition is Jiang Ying because he wants to take the uh, Jing province. So Xiangyang and Jiang Ying. Uh, Jing province is for those of you who have watched the 2010 Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Uh, that is where Liu Bei, Zhou Yu, and uh, Cao Cao, Cao Ren uh, specifically are fighting over. And then you get the whole thing when uh, Taran loses it, goes back to Cao Cao, and they have a big conversation about it there. Um, but yeah, so um, he needs to take that, and you'll get artillery range, uh, firing rate, which is fantastic, like the speed of fire, and ammunition, and legacy of Sun Tzu. So you need to get them to be rank 5 or 6 or higher as time goes on. So... Um, this will give you a reduced penalty from desire and plus 30 prestige. Grandmasters, here we have by learning from the wise and worthy masters. Uh, one is driven to give them all and more. So you've got to have uh, 160 in all of these. <laughs> okay, plus 25 in sync, plus 25 below. Road to Emperorship. So here we have no vassal uh, master, have capital rank 9, capture 10 regions that access the Yellow River, so you've got to go along the Yellow River, and 25 regions north of the Yangtze, okay? Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. All of these things will give you reckless luck. What I do not know is if he dies, if this reckless luck then affects Sun Quan or not. I have not, when my plays, got to that stage. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go into the next turn. <sighs> so, he will eventually declare war against Liu Chong. And if we are not uh, removed from vassal status, we will also be at war with Liu Chong. Um, Yang Feng declared war on Li Jie. Yeah, so this is the fallout from Dong Zhuo's assassination. Lu Bu has been forced to run because Li Jie and Guo Si were chasing him. Um, then there's a huge amount of internal conflict. Li Xian is involved, Yang Feng, um, all fighting over who has the emperor. Yang Feng is trying to protect the emperor and bring him back to Luo Yang his father's son. Yuan Shu is willing to allow your father's former generals to join you in a campaign against Liu Yao. In return, he asks that you give him the imperial seal, which you inherited from your father. So, um, historically, obviously, Yuan Shu already had it, but for the sake of this, and because I frankly want those generals, I am going to give it. Uh, yeah, what use is a lump of jade? You, all you need are your fellow soldiers. Exactly right. Character developments, have a look here. There are big players available in this game early on if you look for it. Ancillary's gained, Devious Attendant. Okay. Uh, that'll give you a level of help. Um, we have our chaps here. How far away out of curiosity? 131. So these people aren't actually that far away from being able to do that, uh, to, to spark that uh, ambition. Now we're going to bring in Chunku. I don't want Pang Ji or Chen Yu, so I'm not going to bring them in. Um, these chaps here, Jamajian Infantry, they are a new form of infantry you can get. You should also see here that the cost has been changed across this patch. So things tend to be a little bit cheaper to hire, but maybe their upkeep is a little bit more expensive. Now, uh, Chongpu, we probably need you <laughs> to be a little bit more of a front line in this one. Um, mercenary archers are a lot more expensive, so I'm not gonna go for them. What I will potentially spend some money on, even though 
they are missile defense versus um yeah we'll bring in a couple of axe bands as well just to get all of that stuff ready and i know i'm going to lose my mustering bonus but i'm not that fussed about it and we'll wait there for this turn not going to do a huge amount else apart from just quickly check out here to see if we've got anything we can work with an aggression pack with yang fong I'm okay with that if you will pay for it. Uh, 50 kwai. Fine. That'll work for me. A little bit of money is always a good thing. Um, as far as the court's concerned, Lady Wu is looking for a, uh, a marriage. You could potentially marry her to one of your loyal generals if you wished. Uh, she's fertile. You get more sons and... Uh, daughters or brothers and sisters for Sun Tzu, but I'm not going to right now anyway. I want to go see who this uh, fantastic new general is, who's brought a thousand men with him as well apparently. So Yuan Shu has declared war on Lu Bu. Um, for those of you who don't know what happens historically, basically he declares war, loses, and here we have the man himself, Zhou Yu. So Wu Jin calls for help against Liu Yao. An old friend returns with his army, treasury 2,500, Yuan Shu uh, supplies. Um, how wonderful, a foothold on the Yangtze. As your army is marching, another force is spotted ahead of you. On the approach, the head of this army is Zhou Yu, an old family friend. The two of you speak at length, and after much discussion, he proclaims that he is willing to do his part to help you achieve great deeds, great and noble deeds. He suggests that, as a first step, you cross the Yangtze and secure a foothold for future operations. Take Xin Du. If alive, Lu Fan joins your court. So Lu Fan, for those of you who read uh, Romance, Lu Fan was the one who persuaded, was sort of working with Yuan Shu and tricked, persuaded uh, Sun Tzu to hand over the Imperial Seal um, for a small amount of men. Um, actually, historically, Lu Fan was a very close friend of Sun Tzu. Um, so you, you'll notice a trend with romance where anything good that comes from Wu is always underplayed or manipulated to make it sound a little bit suspicious. Um, because of course the only person who was good was Lu Bei, despite his betrayal of almost everyone he uh, knew was related to or fought alongside. Um, Anyway, a wealth of knowledge. Your court has grown rapidly in a short space of time, and due to the chaos China has experienced of late, everyone within it has grown wise by virtue of having to learn so quickly. By focusing on, on that wisdom upon a specific character, they will learn more in one day than they would in 10 long years. So reach rank four with one character, and we get a lot of experience for Sun Tzu. So you can see we have a whole load of shared experience here. Uh, if we were to say Changpu, it could be interesting to share some experience with Changpu, I guess. Um, however, I am not certain we wouldn't be able to get it through fighting or something else right now. Anyway, anyhow, anyhow, we want to go to Shindu. Shindu is down here. So let's uh, shift off this way. Um, he has a pretty solid force. He's just going to wait for a second. We're not going to recruit uh, anyone else. The reason why I recruited Chongpu um, into this army right now is just for the sake of giving him some experience. He also doesn't have any massive bonuses to being an army general, but he is an administrator, as I said earlier. He's a very, very good administrator. As far as these other guys go, I'm not certain any of these guys are particularly great at commanding army. He's not bad. Handong, actually Handong is not bad at all. Handong is a little bit upset. Um, we could give him that just to keep him happy for now. Um, I know that's not ideal for him, but uh, it should work. It should work quite nicely. And yeah, let's move on. Ah, good, he's running away as well. That's going to make it much easier to take Shindu. 
I should declare war on Zangba. Yes, Yuan Shu will declare war against everyone. What is owed? Though Yuan Shu promised that Lu Kang's lands would be yours, he now wants to take them and appoint his own administrator. Such is his right as your lord, but can such dishonesty be tolerated? So, do we hand it over? Or do we press our luck? Actually, for this case, I'm going to hand it over. We're going to focus our efforts down south anyway. We knew this, so he can have it. I don't give a toss. Uh, onto the river, please. Um, you as well. Onto the river. Character them is all in. No, we don't need him. Trade is stopped, unfortunately. But that's fine. As soon as we take Xindu fishing port, everything will return. Um, we have a lot of stuff here in the old uh, experience, which is quite nice. Percent income from commerce, uh, income from peasantry is probably not going to be hugely useful for us. That's my available armies, neither will that. Income from commerce is quite nice. That leads to income from industry, but this one leads to income from all sources, which is also pretty damn good. I quite like having this. I don't know who we'll be able to trade with, but I will work it out in uh, the next turn anyway. So, uh, he's a little bit unhappy. We'll bring him out in a second. Don't worry. We'll take Shindu. Um, two armies to take Shindu, and then I'll bring him out into... Two. Uh, non aggression pack for cash. You give what? No, absolutely not. Why would Sorry, I? Me. Why would I pay you? I'm nowhere near you. <laughs> right. Frank destroyed Lu Bu. That's Salsa wiping him out. The first round is pretty damn easy. Liu Bei formed a coalition with Kong Rong. Uh, Pu Lanjing joined a war alongside Gong Sun Zan. So that's Tian Kai. Gong Sun Zan's vassal has died. Lu Bu flees to Liu Bei. Okay. Character Vermance. Lu Bu, uh, you can't hire him. So don't worry. And frankly, you don't want him. He's an ass. Um, hold on. We're just. Oh, fine. I was going to move Joe Yu up to support, but it's a decisive victory. March straight in there. Take. Occupy. Good man. A foothold on the answer. If alive, Lu Fan joins your court. So capture and occupy the following settlement. Dealt with. Legacy of Wu. Secure the mountains. We have captured Xindu fishing port. We now need to focus on the rest of Xindu, the lumberyard and the capital. Impressing the two Jiangs. So Jiang Hong and Jiang Zhao. Um, these are Shrash's. Uh, well, at least I know one of them is Trashes. Zhou Yu tells you that in order to capture the Southlands, you'll need you have need of the two Jungs. These men allegedly have the talent to chart the course of heaven and earth. Although they are currently living in obscurity, hoping to elude the chaos consuming the realm, they may be convinced to aid you should you sufficiently impress them. So we need to take Jian Ye, and we will get the two Jungs. Take from Liu Yao what you need. Your family are fierce warriors all. Now, this must be proved once again. Liu Yao is a threat and cannot be tolerated even remotely interfere in your plans. Draw your sword and march. Time's come. Take Po Yang and Tai Shi Tzu will join. Clear the mountains of tigers and villains. The mountains are home to some of the most dangerous bandits in the kingdom. If these criminals are allowed to remain unchecked, they will inevitably descend upon your lands and terrorize the people. Take Xin Du and you will get Lu Meng. So, you see Wu has a vast, vast number of unique uh, generals coming their way. Right, let's sort this out again. Um, so we are not able to trade with Yuan Shu for reasons I don't quite understand. Gong Sun Du, Shu Xie, Shumao Han Empire. We'll trade with the Han Empire. Um, we'll ask for... He's not really interested in giving me money, is he? Uh, really not. Well, well, sod it. We'll do that. That worked quite nicely. Non aggression pack. Kong Rong, will you buy this from me? We need some money. You will. Oh, how. Ooh. Mm, no. We're going to hold out. We're definitely holding out on the old marriage front. And besides, I don't need more generals because 
my money situation is not good. This is the thing about Sunset's campaign. Your money is in a brutally poor situation um, because you have so many high level generals joining you. Do whatever you need to to keep the wolves at bay. Um, sell anything. So these chaps up at the top, don't matter. You're not going to be affected by what's going on up there for a long time. Uh, military access, Kong Rong, yeah, we can definitely do a deal Change here. Uh, can you give me regular payments? Oh, 500 in regular payments. I can probably get more from you out this way. Uh, you can also look to trade for ancillaries and stuff like that. Uh, ancillaries are quite useful, but right now I just need cash in hand. You can, of course, just trade ancillaries for cash in hand as well. Uh, let's do... There we go. That's a nice chunk of cash. That will work quite nicely. So we need to take Shindu. Shindu is held by Yan Baihu. Um, we're going to bring our boy uh, Zhou Yu uh, here um, on land. And we really want to bring him out. One thousand three hundred seventy-four. It's a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot of money. Let's do it though. It's going to keep him happy. We're going to burn cash though. What we could do, having a quick look, we can smack Poyang and come at Shindu. His army though. Yeah, good quote. It's an interesting point. No, we're going to move off this way. Shindu Fishing Port. I can't really afford to do a huge amount with that. Um, yeah, everything else is looking pretty solid. We have an assignment. We could potentially uh, not Shindu. Let's send Lady Scout. Minus 100. So this is a new thing. Um, you can have sort of aggressive assignments in enemy territory. So she's going to scout Shindu for me uh, to have a look, see what's there. Just so we know where the enemy is. All right. We need to rush the copper mine as fast as we possibly can with Sun Tzu. Um, move the two armies together because uh, mines can be quite a challenge to besiege. Tell us how to clear Wan Changba, Yuan Shu, and Xue Li. He's been liberated. Xiang Yufu, um, who was a loyalist to Liu Yu, um, who rebelled against Gong Sun Zan after Gong Sun Zan killed Liu Yu, um, and actually outlived. Uh, he, he maintained his independence despite Gong Sun Zan's best efforts and eventually sided with Wei. Division in the capital. Though the tyrant is dead, control of the emperor is far from settled. Li Jue and Guo Si, two of Dong Zhuo's former generals and erstwhile allies, are the ostensible regents. But two such ambitious men could not work together for long. Mutual suspicion has escalated to paranoia, then hostility, and gangs of their supporters skirmish in the streets and alleys of Chang'an. So this is where we see the emperors can be moved around a lot. So Lu Fan is now ready for duty, and Sui Gu uh, is here. We don't care about Sui Gu. Right. Um, hmm. We're still a turn away from being able to besiege. There's an army there as well. That's fine. We can deal with that. I got no worries. No one there, which is quite nice. No one there at all. Anything else we can sell? Just to keep us... Oh, that's a shame. Military axe. Oh, that's a shame. No, okay, so we're going to be low on cash. That is what it is. We'll deal with Liu Yao. If he wants to fight, we'll smash him. He is not the general of all of these guys combined. Really? You want to fight a night battle? Yes, I should sit. But he's now mine because... I mean... 
his mistake, basically. So Li Xian now has the Emperor. Right, now, back to business. Attack this chap. That's sort of to be expected. Uh, what we want is for you to just advance. Sun Tzu needs to be the one who takes it. Right, close victory. Let's get into this battle. Okay, here we are. Um, we have reinforcements coming in over here and they have reinforcements coming in over here too. So let's deal with the reinforcements first and foremost. Um, I think we can whack some fire there. Oh, it's so much of a cheat. Um, but game allows me to do it and I need to take advantage of everything going. Right, Chongpu, Sun Tzu. Uh, one, two, Axe Band, there. Three, four, here. Mercs in the back line, cavalry waiting to attack from this side, cavalry waiting to attack from this side, archers ready, start battle, bam bam, flame on, push it to decline, no, th oh, well, you do kind of want a duel, but no, thank you, yep, set fire to stuff, Lu Yao, yeah, let's do this thing, alright, Chongpu. Tashita is better than us. Um, slightly to be expected. Boys, I need you over here. You chaps, charge. Help your man. Um, you guys can also come over here, please. Cavalry, fall back. This army, however, can advance here. Good, right, dealt with, back in here. Flames of the Phoenix. Deal with those archers, please. How are we doing? Getting stuck into those archers. Who are you? Shree. Okay. Excellent, Lance Cav. Good men. Charge in here. You boys fall out. You keep pressing. Uh, go on. Definitely dealing with this situation quite nicely. Tashitsu is going to be a problem. That is completely understandable. Uh, and Dumb's not going to help out too much to be. There. Bam, pop this. Get stuck in here. Go on. You too. So Lu Yao is a sentinel, um, which is why he's holding out quite this nicely. Uh, tenacity of Steel does make them beastly. Sun Tzu is a vanguard, uh, therefore not great at dueling. Um, so don't be surprised that Sun Tzu is struggling a little bit here. Uh, even against a uh, rank 2 um, sentinel, it's perfectly normal. That's why I don't really like the vanguard class for dueling at all. One, we need this. There we go, finished. Just. Okay, but that's Sun Tzu pretty much out for the rest of this fight. Uh, Chongpu, however, deal with Tai Shih Tzu. Uh, let's have the decline. Oh god, no, no, he is done for the day. Uh, let's have the mercenary infantry go help. Archers can shift over here. Um, we'll throw in some sabers too. Uh, now, cavalry. If you wouldn't mind just moving up to this hill. Archers also on the hill. Put you chaps here. Uh, decline, Sun Tzu. 
No, no, no dueling for Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu has done his duel. Go on, run away, run away. All we need is for him to run away. I will let him run, because I know that we will get him eventually. Based on the old, you defeated my master, therefore you are my, uh, you are now my master rules. Okay. Trump will just encourage him to leave. Um, everybody else. Advance. Let's uh, keep moving forward. Join the two armies together. Six, hundred nine. Don't really want to kill him, but if we have to, we have to. And we have Handel, who has Final Rush, which is decidedly less useful, and Sun Tzu's ability. But you'll notice they do not have any spears holding the area, which is going to make it slightly easier for our cavalry to deal with. Um, we are going to need a shield wall. How? Okay, we can form up here. We're going to need a shield wall to deal with the uh, towers. So they can form up there. Then, one, two, three, four, five. A uh, lot of archers behind. And dunk. Pool. Yeah, you've seen him off. Fantastic. Can be back over here. Joel Yu is not a pathetic strategist as well, I should state. Joel Yu is a bit of a beast as far as strategists go. Um, right. Come on, Chung Pool. I need you. Hurry up. Just wait for everyone to get into position. Then we're going to advance. So, my idea is... Um, we have these chaps here who are a little bit more missile defensey than anything else I have, even though they're not great at it. They can advance forward, taking all the shots, axemen behind. Then we're going to let the axes loose to get into the Sabre Militia. Um, axes into Sabre Militia should work slightly in my favour. Um, I mean, not, not vastly, but enough. You chaps are definitely rocking up here. I want one, two, just so we can speed things up. You chaps can come up here. Chongpu, come on. I brought you up here for a reason. You have your anti missile, which isn't a huge number. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Faster, faster, faster. Faster, faster. Get to the front. Come on, can we get that guy in it as well? Oh, not quite. That's fine, though. That'll do the trick. Right. Sabre infantry ready. You chaps move forward. Axes. Go. Go kill him. Right. Everybody pile in. These archers take out this area here. Nicely done. Right, they're starting to break and run, which is precisely what we wanted. Chase them down. Hand dung.
get stuck in. <sighs> Efficient. Chop them to pieces. We have some saber militia here who are struggling, which is absolutely fine because we've got some cavalry that can move up on this flank. Joel, you, you can also come up to support. That's launch some militia. Come on, ride up through. Ride up through. That's fine. That's his job. He will be no worries whatsoever with that. Come on. They run away. Don't get caught up in that mess. Everybody advance through, please. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, there we go. It wasn't so hard, was it? Right. Chung Pu in the rear. Sort of all of you guys in the rear. Hurry up. You, you can kill them. Come on, last scav. Up you come. Alright. They're breaking. Just have the Jan infantry captain who will be a little bit tougher. A little bit tougher. Not world beating you tough though. Just chase them off the field. And they're all going to start routing now. They're all going to start routing. Go on, chase him. I think this should be it. Fantastic. Brilliant. Decisive victory. I like it. Okay, we've taken the city. It's pretty good kills here. 155, Shuri, uh, Reckless, Relentless, Deceitful, Friend with him. You have Clay Rat, and I'm going to release you. We're going to occupy. Uh, Sun Tzu has done a victory dance. Uh, wealth of Knowledge. Here we go. Reach rank 4 with one character. Spectacular. Legacy of Wu. Secure the middle Yangtze. So we've taken Poyang Copper Mine. Just need to take the rest. Ancillary is gained. General of the Front. Win a battle where over 35 units participated. So these um, are not specifically ancillaries. They are... Okay, Frank's gained some sir has upgraded. Um, if we look at our boy here, Joe, you, you'll see this here. Show and hide the titles panel. We have all of these titles. Now, I'm not going to hand them out because it relates to our income and we don't have any income. Um, but they are essentially what will uh, give you uh, faction loyalty, faction... Um, are you... seriously? Extent desires higher court position. Well, there ain't one, so stop your belly aching. But yeah, it, were we to really worry about it, we could chuck one of these at him. And you see each of them do slightly different things, plus 100 character salary. Um, here we have General of the Left, General of the Front, General of the Right, you know, all of that stuff. And that's your character loyalty, instead of just doing a click button here to pay, okay? Um, right, well that's been dealt with quite nicely. We are running a little bit low on luck. Uh, our man here is a touch unhappy as well because he feels he should be higher rank. Um, trade with Yuan Shu. Why is that suspended though? Hopefully that will sort itself out next turn. Uh, Li Xian, I don't mind doing this with you if you want to pay for it. Uh, receive payment. I'll take any money going. That'll do. Um, non aggression pact, I will take with the Han Empire. If you will pay, you won't, so cock off. Non aggression pact, I will take with Liu Bei. Again, if you pay. Uh, will you. 
You will, you will. Oh, that's actually a little bit nicer. That's a lot of money. Good man. Good man, Liu Bei. Good man. Military access. Would you... No, not me, make. Uh, him make. Would you pay for this as well? Oh, you would. Oh, Liu Bei, you... Gem of a man. Ha ha ha. Look at how that is sorted out my <laughs> problems. Um, we're still not exactly rolling in money, but it's better than nothing. But, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've gone on long enough here. I hope you are enjoying this. I certainly am. It's going to be a much more faster, expansive campaign. Uh, I think we're going to focus on uh, Poyang um, straight away. Go leave the attack on Poyang Town. We'll get Taisha Tse. Um, we need to smack him as well. So, mm, yeah. We do need to smack him as well. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe, perhaps, we'll split the armies up. One goes one way, one goes the other way. But that's for next time. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more Sincere. Bye-bye.